Bro, textbooks are so scary, dude. Like, look at this beef. What the heck? And I have seen some scary things, okay? I saw College Board 2020 AP test, dude. I saw my English teacher on four hours of sleep, dude. That is scary as heck. But textbooks, dude, these guys are even more scary, okay? Hello, everybody. I'm Karara, and today we're going to be talking about how to tackle these massively scary textbooks. And no, you don't tackle them like you would tackle a football player, okay? A football player is 10 times weaker. Now I'll admit, I'm not a master at taking notes or reading textbooks or anything, but I have defeated quite a few textbooks back in my day, okay? I don't know how I have so little of a life, but literally during junior year, I was so addicted to Quizbowl and Science Bowl that I literally read like 10 textbooks that year. I don't know what happened. I don't know what was going through my mind, but that's what I did. Wait, what the heck did I even read, dude? Okay, so I read through the whole Earth Science textbook for Science Bowl. That was not very entertaining, but I read through it, okay? I obviously read through Campbell again. What else did I do? I read the astrophysics textbook. I read some like semiconductor physics textbook. Oh my God, there's so many random things I did. I don't know why. Why would I do this to myself? Oh yeah, dude, I literally read Tortora and Raven's two biology textbooks. Bro. Not a great use of my time, but I still did it. But I do think my experience with finding textbooks has turned me into a battle-hardened veteran, so I just wanted to share my tips on how I would approach reading textbooks and self-studying from them. Because I think it's a really useful skill, right? Like, you don't want to have to take a class just to learn something, right? Like, there are all these textbooks out there. If you're able to learn from a textbook, you basically have all the knowledge you want at your fingertips. Now, a lot of you guys have been asking me, like, what note-taking tips I have or, like, what strategies I do. I think that the actual process by which you take notes is not the main thing that's important, okay? Like, there's no magic note-taking technique that's suddenly going to make you retain, like, 600% of the information you write down. I think the most important thing for retaining knowledge is making connections, and the more ways you make connections in, the better. And the only way to make more connections is to spend more time on it. Basically, the more important thing is how you manage your time and how you like divide up the textbook, basically. And don't worry, I'll make it more specific. I basically wanted to break up this video into three parts, okay? So first, how to read a textbook if you just want to study it for an AP test or something. Second, how you should read through a textbook if you're doing it for Olympiads, because they are very different, okay? If you want to do an AP, you probably do not care about retaining the information afterwards, so that's not important. And then third, like reading a textbook is one thing, right? And then using the problems in the textbook is a completely different like subject, right? Because you can't take notes on problems. That's just a matter of doing it. So that's a separate topic altogether. So let us talk about how to read a textbook for AP exams and like those things where you don't really care about like retaining the knowledge afterwards, okay? Now the reason why your studying strategy might be so different for this is because Tell me if I'm wrong, but like, no one remembers what they learn at the beginning of a year in AP class, okay? There is no way you do that. Like, the chance you remember anything about Native Americans by the time the APUSH exam comes out is basically zero, okay? If you remember it, then you're crazy. I respect you, but I really don't even know what the heck Navajo means, okay? What, what, what other tribes were there? They're like Cherokee or something? I don't, I don't know. There was like some Chief Joseph guy. Whatever, who cares? <laughs> so basically the point is, if you don't want to retain knowledge for a really extended period of time, right? Like for an AP exam, all you got to do is remember it on that one day and you are Gucci. Then you do not really have to be studying super, super early, okay? Like if I told you guys to make a study schedule at the beginning of the year and just keep doing it throughout the year just so that you could study for this one day, like a whole year later, none of you guys are going to do that. I think a more realistic study plan is to spend the two months before the AP exam doing some like legit reading, okay? And no, it does not mean taking notes that you want to turn into your teacher, okay? Those are probably the worst quality notes. You like just scribble whatever it'll take to get you that grade. No, not those kinds of notes. So basically what I would recommend if you're studying for an AP exam is start studying two months in advance, then go through your textbook systematically and just go through it chapter by chapter, taking notes however the heck you want. Now what works really well for me when I'm taking notes is I like to write questions and then answers, right? Because if you just look at notes, you're just like reading notes that doesn't force your brain to do anything. Like reading the sentence, George Washington is cool, is not gonna make you remember that George Washington is cool because you didn't have to do anything. Everything you needed to know was literally right in front of you, you just read it off. Like what I would recommend is basically just flashcards, but I write a question for myself and then have the answer hidden, and then that forces yourself to think, okay? Just taking normal notes and reading over them is pretty darn useless. Now the main reason why people like to take notes is because they want to be able to condense the information, and I think that's really good. So if you're able to condense the information and write it in your own words, then note-taking is useful, okay? But if you just copy the textbook, just like take out a couple words here and there so that it looks smaller, that's useless, okay? If you're taking notes, what you have to do is you have to write it in your own words so that proves to yourself that you actually understand the concept. Now, I don't know about you guys, but like a bunch of people say just draw diagrams or something because that'll let you find the cause and effect relationship between these things. That does not work for me, okay? Like drawing flowcharts does not help me in any way, shape, or form. I think the best way to do it is just to summarize it in your own words, right? Or do flashcards because flashcards force you to think 
And it, it's not that like reading George Washington is cool, right? It's like, what is George Washington? Hmm, I wonder what. Oh, he was cool. Now I will remember that for the rest of my life. And then once you have these flashcards and notes, you just read through them however many times you want. Don't go back to the textbook, okay? Also, one thing I forgot to mention is don't write down things you already know because then you're just like wasting time studying stuff you already know. Try to write down only the obscure facts or like confusing things in the textbook. And now to throw everything I just said out the window, honestly speaking, I think crash courses never failed anyone for the AP exam. Like whenever I'm taking an AP test, I'm not like, oh yes, I'm so glad I took notes that time. I totally remembered it from there. I'm always like, thank God, Joxy. Thank you so much for letting me watch that two hours before the test and making me remember that fact that George Washington is truly cool. So basically just to sum that up, I would recommend starting to study two months before Set a study schedule to like finish studying all the chapters that you need to study like in a month basically. And then set aside the last month to watch crash courses, read over your flashcards, and read over your notes. Okay, now Olympiads, okay? This is a lot different because you actually had to retain it for more than just one day, right? If you get past the first level, you had to apply to the second level, and then you have like a bunch of years to do it, right? Like you're not just gonna take your freshman year and then just give up for the rest of the years. Or maybe, maybe you might do that. You better not, okay, that's like evil. Why would you do that? But basically my strategy is this. You have to read a book multiple times in order to retain the information, okay? However, you also have to keep your motivation to read the textbook, right? Like if you lose motivation to read the textbook and you just give up in like halfway in the year, then you're screwed anyway. So half the battle is retaining motivation. The other half is actually retaining the information. So the way I approach this for Yusubo, right? is I had to read all of Campo, right? And I was just an eighth grader and I was like really not motivated at all. So basically what I did is I just skimmed through the entire textbook, right? Got as much knowledge as I could out of it just by skimming. Like I retained like probably 20% of it, but it still kept me motivated, right? It let me get through the book at a much faster rate, right? So once I finished the book, I felt good about myself. And then I could also look at practice exams and not be like, oh, I didn't read that yet. That's why I didn't know it. Instead, I'm like, oh, I read this, but I forgot it. Maybe I have to review that more. And then just by reading through the entire textbook, you, you're able to answer more questions than if you just read through one section really, really slowly. Like I think the one thing that keeps people motivated is being able to like say, oh, I saw that somewhere, but I just can't remember it. That's a lot better than being like, oh, what the heck does that even mean? God dang it. So first pass, just skim through the hacking textbook, okay? Keep yourself motivated. Then the second pass, what you gotta do is you gotta take notes, right? These are the same strategy as AP notes. Make sure that you're not copying the textbook word for word. Make sure that you're summarizing it in your own words. Make sure that you're making as many connections as you can, okay? Like I make the stupidest connection. Dude, one time I was like, okay, how do I remember that the right atrium has oxygen poor blood? Then I was like, right stands for R, which stands for rich, okay? But then I'm gonna flip that so even though R is for rich, the right atrium is actually oxygen poor. And I still remember that. I still remember it that way. That's the only way I remember it. I'm just like, R to rich, oh, it's a poor. Okay, makes sense. <laughs> and whenever you're taking notes, focus on how things work, right? Because that's the most trippy thing, okay? Like if you don't understand how something works, that's going to mess you up so bad. So in your notes, you basically have to draw out how things work and make sure you understand it through the second path, okay? So if in your first read through, you didn't totally understand how bacterial conjugation is, basically where they stab each other with pili and transfer genetic material, we don't want to talk about that because that's kind of nasty, but if you didn't know how that works the first time, you basically got to spend a lot of time on it the second time and make sure you know how it works. Like these right here are my second pass notes for Campo, okay? So basically what I try to do is I try to keep it extremely concise, right? Just term definition, term definition. Now honestly, these could be a lot better. Like these sentences are way too long, like unnecessarily long. I never read through these notes again. So that was kind of bad. So I recommend more focusing on making these a lot shorter and then also <laughs> including less irrelevant detail. A 1960s more mathematical approach to system biology, such a useful thing to know. I'm totally gonna remember that in the 1960s they became more mathematical. But yeah, you get the idea, right? I basically did chapter one in one page. You got chapter two in like two pages. You just wanna make it as concise as possible. Now I think this pass was not particularly that useful. So honestly, if you wanna skip to my third pass, which was basically writing questions and answers, then I'm not gonna blame you. But I do think it's important because it basically forces you to go through it slowly, but it's not as time consuming as writing questions. So this right here is my questions page, right? I include the important diagrams at the top, right? And basically what I used to do is I used to print out these questions and I literally brought them into class and when I was really bored, I just took these out under the table and started reading them. Don't tell anyone, okay? No one has to know. But anyway, yeah, so I just put all the important diagrams and then I have my questions over here, right? And then I have my answers over here. Honestly, I think if I put this into a flashcard app, it would have been a lot more efficient, but I, I just kept them open in two separate tabs. So I have the answers over here and then the questions over here. I think this one was the most useful because I literally only reviewed through my question docs now because they're pretty comprehensive. I included as much detail as I could. 
and I only included the stuff that was really confusing to me or were really obscure details. So honestly, from my experiences, I think that the best strategy is to use flashcards because those force you to think. Not that you guys know how to read the textbook, right? You want to first get your motivation by reading through the whole thing so you could at least attempt like practice problems, right? Then you want to do a second pass through just taking notes, right? Because that'll force you to understand some of the concepts a little bit better, maybe give you some opportunity to make up some mnemonics and stuff. And then the third time you want to write questions, right? Because now at this point, you should probably have a good understanding of how things work, but you just can't remember it like super fast. So that's why the questions work really well. But now we actually got to do problems to practice, okay? So this is not that applicable to bio per se, but this is really applicable to physics and stuff like that. So for problems, I would recommend doing it after you read each chapter, right? So basically how I did it for physics, right? In physics textbooks, they're usually like level one, level two, and level three problems. So basically what I did is I did the level three problem from a physics section, right? And if that one's too hard for me, then I went down to the level two question. And if I couldn't do that, then I go to the level one question. And then once I could solve it, I work my way back up. And basically I set a limit for myself, right? Get to two level three questions solved, and then you can move on to the next section within the same chapter. And once I solved two level three questions from each of the sections, then I moved on to the next. So basically the idea is you don't want to just blindly do problems, okay? What you want to do is you want to find the right difficulty of problems and then slowly work yourself up to the hardest problems there are. Like a lot of people, they just go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's just such a waste of time, dude. There's no reason to do level one questions if they're too easy for you. But then at the same time, there's no reason to do level three questions if they're too hard for you. So you first have to build yourself up and then once you're ready, do the level three question. Also, chances are you're not gonna remember all the answers to all the problems once you finish the entire book. So don't worry about like saving questions for after, right? You can easily find more questions online, use a different textbook, whatever. Just focus on doing questions that are at the right difficulty and then it'll be a lot more helpful. Also, another thing about doing problems, don't just be like, oh, come on, I don't know how to solve this. Let's just look at Slater. Oh, that's how you do it. Let's move it on, move it on. Let's just I totally know how to do that one. <laughs> no, looking at Slater does not mean you know how to do a problem, okay? Look at like the first step and then try it again, okay? Don't look at the entire solution and then just be like, oh, I probably, I'll, I'll know how to do it on the actual test. So no, you won't. You won't magically learn how to do it on the actual test. So if you don't know how to do a problem, look at like the first step from Slater, then try it again. Look at the second step, try again until like you get to the very last step and you still don't know how to do it. And then you're probably doing two hard problems anyway. So you should move down a level. So very epic stuff. That's basically all I wanted to talk about textbook. All right, thank you guys for watching so much. I hope it was helpful. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching again and see you guys next time.